anyone can do without technology, without money, you know, science. First of all, don't smoke. Yeah. That'll damage your DNA, that'll accelerate the aging process. Does that include like e-cigarettes and all these other vaping? Does that also include Well, I'm, that? A, I'm a big uh, advocate for, uh, for putting nothing artificial in your body, yeah. including vaping. Yeah. A, I don't think vaping is as bad in terms of the number of chemicals getting into your body. Yeah. But we've seen recently, it's probably not healthy anyway. Yeah, yeah. That's one. Next one is don't eat so much, eat less often. So not malnutrition, of course, um, you don't want to get too thin, but this three meals a day plus snacks is ridiculous. It's been In the my future, life. <laughs> you look I to, great. I need to get rid of that. Yeah, well, you're also working it out, but yeah, someone yeah. like me who's not an athlete, yeah. the most exercise I do during the day typically is typing. Uh, <laughs> three meals a day is too much. Actually, one meal is enough for someone like me. Wow. Next one would be the obvious, high intensity interval training. Uh -huh. Lose your breath once in a while. Lose your breath, what do you mean? Just by like working out like? You know. Yeah, become hypoxic. Uh, tell your body that you're being chased by a saber toothed tiger or yeah. something like that. The reason all of this stuff works in terms of the diet and exercise, uh, it's not that your blood flows more or that being hungry is, is just healthy for the body. It's actually that your longevity genes get turned on by these things. And why does that happen? Why does it happen in humans, in mice, even in yeast cells for bread and beer? Huh. The reason is that the body senses adversity and says, crap, we got to fight back. We, we might die next week without food and we, you know, we're running away from tigers and lions. <laughs> That's what this survival network, this longevity gene. So it causes. turns it on when it feels like it's in survival mode. That's it. We want to be in survival mode and we spend our whole lives trying to reduce our adversity. Right, being comfortable. Right. Being yeah, don't be hungry, yeah. don't be puffed, don't walk, you know, valet your car, right. roll your suitcase, don't carry it, for goodness sakes. <laughs> We've done the worst. No wonder we're, we're getting sicker and sicker. We're in a world of convenience. Right, and it's the worst thing we could do really? for our bodies in terms of longevity. The type of food you eat is important. Mm. Uh, yeah, there's a big debate, of course. About well, they say like plant-based is going to extend the telomeres, right? If you're eating leafy greens, that's what I've heard. But. Right. Well, among other things, it's also going to have um, a couple of really important types of molecules. One are the monounsaturated fats, uh -huh. fatty acids. You get that from olive oil and avocados. Those are great. And uh, we've just learned that that's a really important trigger for a certain longevity. Gene. Olive oil. Yeah, there's a, there's a new discovery as of a week ago that says we think we understand how that works. But in olive oil, there's also what are called, the other, the other important component of a plant-based diet are polyphenols, uh -huh. which are the molecules that plants make when they're under adversity, when they're stressed. And I believe that we've evolved to sense when our food is running out. So we get that signal when our plants are stressed. So you don't want to eat plants that are like this white, Withered. white li liquid <laughs> lettuce you can buy, Californian lettuce. Right, right. You want these colored vegetables that have been uh, a little bit stressed, a little really? bit dried out. Wine is a perfect example. It's full of polyphenols, one called resveratrol that we've worked on for 20 years. Wow. And it activates these longevity pathways really well. Wow. So stress your food, stress organic. Your food. Yeah. Um, I am for a plant-based diet, but I do eat meat yeah, me occasionally. It tastes pretty good, but um, but you know it's very clear. You know, Dan Butner is right. Where you go to the longest-lived places in the world, the blues eating when I'm about 60, 70 percent full, and I'm trying to I just never feel full lunch. until I'm like eating so much, and then I'm like, okay, I'm full. Well, you're a young, so active, I probably, I, hungry man. Well, here's one of the things. I think one, when you eat slower, you start to get fuller. You start to feel it. And I've, I'm the youngest of four. And so as a kid, we didn't have a lot of money growing up in a small town in Ohio and there wasn't that much food. So I learned to like grab and just shove it in my mouth. And that became a habit mm -hmm. that I've kind of stuck with. And I'm not starving anymore. Like the food's available at any time. I can afford it and I have it all the time. But I think it's reconditioning my mind or a habit or routine of like, you know, I'm not scarfing my face down right now, but you know, it's that mindset of, oh, what if I'm gonna go hungry? For sure. 
Uh, we all suffer from that. Well, not all of us, but those of us who grew up in regular families, we were told to finish our meals. Right. Don't and leave anything on the plate. And There's hungry kids problems, everywhere. Brothers <laughs> and sisters, right? They're stealing your food. Uh, my wife grew up um, in a very poor family. Um, and uh, even when she was a student, she could barely afford food. She would scrounge and buy, buy potatoes. <laughs> yeah. And at the dinner table, she'll kill me, kill me for this, but... Uh, she will eat like it's gonna all go away tomorrow. <laughs> but I have, to, I have to remind her and everybody, everyone should know this, there's always gonna be another meal. Yeah. There will be another meal, don't worry. Uh, but we're conditioned to eat food when we, it's in front of us. I think it's a mental conditioning and it's also like, you've, either your body's tricking you or it's your brain or it's your gut or something is tricking you like, I'm still hungry. Even though you've had 2000 calories in 10 minutes, you're still like, oh, there's food. It's like turning something on where you're like, I want to eat that. I don't know why that is. Well, yeah, I mean, it's the it reason that we're here. Our ancestors yeah. uh, put on fat and they survived the famine. We don't have famines anymore, thank goodness. Yeah. But we, we've descended from those people. Right. So we've got the, the genes in our brain that say, eat, eat, eat. Um, How and do you turn that gene off? Well, you, <laughs> well you, you can you can take certain types of food. I, I drink a lot of tea uh -huh. uh, and coffee, uh, hot water even, just to fill up my stomach. That works really well. Okay. Hot water, not cold water. Uh, I just like the feeling of hot okay. water. Cold water uh, isn't as, I actually, it might be something about the heat. I've never thought about it, but for me, that's what works. So when I get a little bit hungry at lunchtime, I'll just, I'm, warm, I'm basically warm, drinking tea. Warm water, tea. Yeah, you put it like some, oh, yeah. interesting. Okay. But, it, but it's a fight all the time. Yeah. You know, I fly a lot and, and people are bringing Nuts, nuts and cookies and ice cream and and you gotta fight it and it's really hard to fight all how do the you time. say no well i do I, you don't. <laughs> I do but how do i do that so i've trained myself yeah. uh, to fight it and the best thing that i do besides saying can i have a cup of tea is what do i want to look like next week mm. what do i want to look, look like a year from now mm. what do i want to look like when i'm 80. so you uh, you tell yourself that you ask yourself the question i think it's also how do you want to feel Tonight, tomorrow, next week, when you're 80. It's like look like and feel combination is powerful. Right, because your, your mind is saying now is important and yeah. you got to train yourself to say tomorrow and the next year is the just as important. my life, yeah. Right, and that's more important. Uh, there are a couple of things. I'll, let's divide it up. One is get good night's sleep. Sleep is everything. Yeah, and then surround yourself by friends and people who take care of you. Yeah. That's like the blue zone way too, right? It's like be around a good community, get lots of rest and naps, move a little bit, eat healthy, 